Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, and I'm back with another mini reading. This morning, I would like to look at the chart of renowned famous singer-songwriter Tom Waits. Uh, I used to be crazy about Tom Waits, especially when I was younger, when I was in early, in my early 20s, 20s generally, late teens, early 20s, things like that. Um, I just thought he was so cool, so interesting, such a fascinating character, wrote very strange music um especially as he got older go ahead and share my screen if you like this content don't forget to hit like subscribe and share uh but let's get into it tom waits december 7th 1949 7 25 a.m pomona california um so tom waits is one that considered one of the the greatest songwriters of all time because uh, he's just written such amazing, amazing classics, such as Downtown Train, which has been covered many times, and he's written songs for uh, celebrities that he never played um, that went on to become hits. I believe one of them was uh, Wind Beneath My Wings, which I don't even know who who sang that. It was the cover, um, but it did make the charts. and regardless of whether you like that song or not, it's not easy to write a song for somebody else that can become a hit. So he's an amazing songwriter, amazing singer, um, musician in his own right. He's got the deep gravelly voice and just unique, unique style, right? I fell in love with him. And um, when, um, gosh, what was the album? um closed closing time? no I, I can't remember i don't know i'm just bad with details it's my jupiter conjunct mercury makes me a little fuzzy on the details let's let's look at his chart okay sun and sag uh in the 12th house pretty much conjuncting the ascendant uh conjunct chiron too so 12th house being very creative but it's not too far removed from the ascendant that it's lost and the expression is sort of hidden. Um, his son is there present, but it's, it's, you know, and this is one of the reasons why he's sort of like, he never hit stardom. He never hit, he did to a certain degree, but he never made it super big, partially because his son is a little bit hidden in the 12th house. That is part of the reason, okay? Because he's more of a behind the scenes kind of guy. He's writing the songs, he's writing the hits that other people cover. I mean, his songs were, I mean, if you know Downtown, if you know any of his songs, I mean, I like Downtown Train because it's just one of the, I don't know, his cover is, is just, his version of it's the best and other people did it too, but his is better. Anyway, um, his son is conjunct Chiron and Chiron gives a lot of empathy and it gives a lot of concern for the underdog, for the wounded, for the rejected, for the outcast because Chiron represents the wounded healer, represents somebody, uh, you know, Chiron was a centaur who was rejected by his mother at birth, blah, 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 got shot with a poison arrow. Yeah, but so what it represents is, is empathy and concern for, for those who are um, also, you know, down and out. Um, it can represent a healer as well. Um, early in life, it can show somebody who's heavily guarded, heavily self-protected, you know, really who themselves are wounded. And they're playing out that karma. They're they're protecting themselves and they're hypersensitive. You know, they you can't get too close to them. And they're just always like uh, you know, hype, you know, on edge because they, they they have this wound they're trying to protect. It gives them a lot of empathy. And um, if they're not outright healers, they are for the underdog in life. And we see that with his with his music. He's he really does represent the the dirty underside of life, singing about, you know, like poor working class and all that. Um, he was heavily influenced by jazz and, um, you know, just work, blue collar, working class kind of kind of life. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of his huge charms, really, uh, is that he's singing, he, he's romanticizing something that's very unromantic, you know, poverty, hard work, working class, you know, just the seedy underside of, of city life, urban life, 
or life in general. Um, anyway, um, Sagittarius, fantastic for um, you know big mindedness, uh, philosophy, travel, long distance travel, and that 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 hip swag, you know, that uh, Sag knows how to relax and get down, and you know. Sagittarians love to party, they're free spirits, they're wild. Um, and since we're, since we're here, we, you know, ascendant, sun, ascendant, current, uh, Mercury. Now, Mercury is opposite its rulership in Gemini, but it's got excellent dignity being right here on the ascendant to the degree. Ah, that is powerful. That is one of the most powerful. As far as positions go, conjunct the ascendant is the most powerful position for Mercury. I would say, I mean, that's where it um, gains directional strength the most. So you wanna know why he's a singer songwriter? I mean, look no further, uh, why he can write amazing, amazing songs. That, and it's aspecting, it's sign of rulership in the ninth house with Mars and Saturn here um, in Virgo. So, I mean, this aspect is really, Excellent, excellent for songwriting. Why? Well, Virgo, number one, right, is, um, you know, it's where uh, Mercury gets exalted. It's, it's the very, um, you know, uh, highest expression of Mercury. And um, Mars and Saturn is a very intense combination. I have Mars and Saturn and Leo in the 10th house, um, whole sign. Saturn actually falls in the ninth house for me. But what this does is um, this somewhat restricts, this is going to restrict his higher education, his higher knowledge, his higher learning to, to a degree. Um, but it, it makes his Mars work so hard. Um, and so does the square. So the, here too, Saturn makes you work hard. Virgo makes you work hard. Squares make you work hard. So what he's doing is, is, is just nonstop creating with this Virgo, Mercury on the Ascendant, Sagittarius, Sun, this, this axis, because uh, uh, Sun is squaring these planets too, is becoming supercharged um, with, with work, with effort. Saturn and Virgo in the square are, are making this Mars work hard, the Sun work hard, the Ascendant and, and Mercury. And also it's dispositor, Jupiter, and by conjunction, Venus, we'll get to that. But there's a lot of work. There's a lot of creative writing here going on. And ninth house is bringing in the higher mindedness. Like if you look at his writing, it's super intelligent. It's like literary. It's like, you know, like Bob Dylan level of, of like quality. It's, it's really up there. It's, 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 it's high level literature. And that's the ninth house in Virgo. It's uh, because this is where you go to graduate school. This is where you really develop the highest potential of education uh, and skills. And this is where you become an expert in the ninth house. It's the house of expertise. So, and if you follow his career, you'll know that this makes perfect sense that he was like this kind of like small time jazz musician. Um, he wrote, he, he made some albums. He was signed by a record label, but they were gonna quit. They were gonna, they were gonna get rid of him. They were like, look, you make good songs and everything, but you're just not, you're not hitting the big times. Uh, you, you're a little bit too tame and boring and predictable. Each album is kind of just a reflection of the last one. And um, that's when he changed it up. And um, <clears throat> he totally, um, I'm gonna find the album where he broke through. Uh, Sorry. Maybe it was swordfish trombones. Um, it was around that time. And he, he, he changed up his music and made it like um, totally weird, totally unique, totally artist, you know, drawing on the, the artistry of, of his, his, his talent, his creativity. Um, and then he wrote songs like, um, Gosh, I'm terrible with names. We sail to night for Singapore. We're all those mad ass hatters here. It's just weird, weird, like weirdness, weirdness. And he drew upon this, this um, 
uh, exact conjunction of Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter uh, um, conjunct Venus. Venus would be the, the significator of arts and music in Aquarius in his second house. So here's his voice, right? And Aquarius, we know, is the weirdest sign of all. It's the sign of weirdness, if you want to get down to it, because it's not referencing anything. And that's why we think it's weird. It has that Uranian quality where it's pulling things out of inspiration in the moment without referencing the past or anything else. And that's why it has such a, Aquarius has such an ability to be unique and different and rebellious and oftentimes hilarious as hell or just weird, right? And so Tom Waits is pulling on the weird factor because this combination, depending on what house it's in, can be extremely funny. Jerry Lewis has this exact conjunction, which I already covered. But here it's influencing his voice and his knowledge. So his like deep, you know, inner mind right and um <clears throat> giving him that that strange factor the tom waits weirdness right he he i think he started in bram stone not start uh he played a role in bram stone's dracula because he was all, he's also an actor and he was like the weird guy who ate bugs in the cell you know that's, that's very much this aquarius you know jupiter venus conjunction he can do the weird thing like big time he's a big weirdo like in a, in the good way, in a best in the best way, right? Um, he's got this exalted moon in Cancer conjunct Uranus in the seventh house. Excellent for um, reaching reaching the crowd, reaching the masses, right? Singing his songs and and being heartfelt. Uh, we feel his heart. We feel his uh, moon in domicile in Cancer. And the Uranus, adding, adding another layer to the weirdness, adding another dimension to the uniqueness, the, re the rebellious quality that, um, you know, he's Tom Waits. He's so, he's, he's his own person. Like there is no, there is nothing like Tom Waits on this planet. There never will be. He's completely unique inside and out. He's got Uranus conjunct moon that adds to his creative uh, talents where he's just like coming up with stuff. We don't know where he's getting it from. It's from this Uranus and this Aquarius combinations, plus a Mercury on the ascendant, right? <clears throat> Creative genius, really, uh, with these combinations. And then when he sings his songs, his heart is right there for everyone. We can hear it. We can feel it. It's so potent. There is a minor... I won't say minor, but there is a little bit of a square going on with the moon here with the nodes. Uh, it's not tight, it's a few degrees out, but it's still square. It's still affecting, affecting him. And that's <clears throat> creating some kind of destiny, right? When I see squares to the nodes, I know something relating to that planet, that sign, that house um, is having a certain destiny for good or bad. Sometimes squares to the nodes are bad. Sometimes they can mean an accident, a horrific accident where people die. Like if Uranus is square to the nodes, um, I have my Mars square to the nodes. Mars represents older sibling, my older brother died, right? But it's not always death. It can mean fame too, depending on what planet it rules or it's squaring in the house and the sign, right? Um, so I think there's something here with, with Tom Waits is uh, it's a sort of a destined, relationship where he's being this you know vocal he has this this relationship with the masses because seventh house is, is others in relationship one-on-one -on -one, but it's also the masses so it's, it's very large groups of people as well as individual and you know one-on-one -on -one relationships right um so <clears throat> what else pluto in the eighth house um Pluto does well in Leo. Uh, that's the boomer generation. And um, they're very strong because Pluto is, is really just, you know, supercharged by Leo. It just gets tremendous confidence um, and, you know, power. Pluto is the power. And Pluto in the eighth house is really at home uh, in that it's, it's the eighth house is, you know, Scorpio's original house in the natural zodiac. Uh, Pluto feels at home here, but Pluto is no less Plutonic here. This can create um, a lot of crisis, trauma, depth, and power 
Um, it's a power position. Um, I'd, I'd see generally Pluto in the eighth house is probably not a bad position. Um, it, but it requires, I mean, it's, it's going to bring, it's, it's going to do what Pluto does, which is, you know, crisis, death, transformation, and, um, you know, a lot of psychological awareness, a lot of occult awareness, um, uh, penetrating secrets, you know, it's power, it's power. Um, and it gives them a lot of power and depth here um, in general. Um, so we have South Node in Libra, but South Node is conjunct the MC basically by three degrees. And that's why he was able to, to gain success early on. The Saturn somewhat limited his success until he was able to break through, because that's always what you have to do with Saturn. You have to break through. And that's where we see the, the change in his career, where he was just sort of this. I mean, by the way, those early songs are really, really nice. Like they're really soft and sweet. And we get the, the very Cancerian heart. He hadn't broken through his Saturn and he wasn't expressing his, his um, real uniqueness with the Uranus and the, the Aquarius yet. But, um, or in a strong way, it was very subdued. But then he broke through that Saturn and we got this powerful Tom Waits that we know about today. Where it's just like, he unleashed the weird. He unleashed the freak. You know, let the freak you know, let your freak flag fly is what they say, I guess you could say. And that's his freak flag, you know, where he just, um, you know, went on to like the, create like this, like monster music. Um, uh, yeah, banging on, he would bang on pots and pans as percussion. This is weird. He made weird weirdness, but it was incredible at the same time because it was never never been done before in the way that tom waits did it and he was the perfect guy for it but we see this early rise to fame because south node represents um what we the skills we come in with and so south node conjunct mc will have an easy time raining, uh, rising to career success whatever career they're in um conjunct neptune fantastic for the arts and creativity because neptune is the um, it's the planet that represents um, arts and spirituality and fantasy and delusion, drugs and alcohol. He had a problem with alcohol for a while. He was an alcoholic, smoked a long time, got cancer. Um, yeah. Um, and then recovered. Um, but, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a user and abuser and all that. Um, and Neptune is always prompt, not always, but a lot of times. So a lot, a lot of times, very prominent in musicians, artists, creative types, actors, dancers, things like that. Um, and like I would say, if Neptune is prominent in a um, politician's chart or world leader, that's not a good world leader. Like Joe Biden, that's because he's lying. Because when Neptune is on in the 10th house, um, that shows a career of deception. And we want that for artists. We want that for musicians. We want that for actors. We do not want that from our politicians because that just means they're lying their ass off all the time, 100% of the time, right? And here's a little diatribe. People are always criticizing Trump because they say he's a liar. Well, those people who criticize Trump and say he's a liar are themselves liars and bad judge of character because Trump is an exaggerator and he does it for effect. It's the Gemini thing. A real liar doesn't come across as being a liar. That's not obvious. It's not, it's not the way lying works. You lie to deceive people. You don't lie so that they know that you're lying. That's called exaggerating for effect. I mean, come on, you fucking idiots. Get it right. Stop being such dumbasses. A liar is not going to reveal themselves. Stupid fucks. There I go. All right. <laughs> North node uh, is conjunct the IC. And, you know, after age 42, the North node becomes very active. And I don't know what, at what age this really, um, at what point it really became active for him. But he did, the thing is, is that after his initial, not initial, he had a very high point in his career where he broke, broke through into the, um, you know, the Tom Waits that we all know and love, the weird 
you know, creative genius, singer songwriter. Um, and then, and then he started to fade after that. Like there, there was a period where he was just like shining, like he was just lit, writing all this music, making crazy, crazy songs. And, and then after a while, it just started to fade out. Like, where is he now? Like, what's he doing now? That's North Node in the fourth house because the South Node's the past, North Node's the future, second half of his life. So, I mean, he's just happy at home, being comfortable, being himself. And he's probably still writing and singing and who knows what, I have no idea. But point is, he's not going to be prominent in the second half of his life because North Node is in the fourth house. Um, yeah, and that is, oh, I forgot. Okay, his moon is way out of bounds. Okay, so is his Mercury. Um, Pluto's Uranus is out of bounds. Pluto, I think is just about out of bounds, but moon and, and Mercury. So let's look at that. So out of bounds shows somebody who is um, literally, depending on what planet, it's, it's going out of the boundaries. You know, when the, when the planets are following the suns, you know, they go within a certain range. Beyond a certain range is considered out of bounds, right? An out of bounds planet um, shows, especially with, well, with the moon, it shows like very extreme emotional swings, but also this ability to think outside the box, to push uh, the limitations of, you know, society, the accepted, just to the, to the extreme. And you can see this in criminals, but you can also see this in creative geniuses. So he's going way out of bounds, especially with his moon, but also with his Mercury, and then somewhat Uranus and, and Pluto, right? And that really explains a lot, like why, like when we listen to some of his later music, we're just like, oh my God, this is like, what the heck? So strange, so weird. That's, that's Uranus, that's out of bounds moon, that's the Aquarius, you know, uh, Jupiter conjunct Venus, um, you know, and yeah, that's pretty much it. He doesn't have any um, stationary planets, uh, but he does have those extreme. And, and by the way, the, the 28 degree uh, moon. Um, yeah, 28 degree, 12 minutes out of bounds uh, declination. Um, that's about as far as it gets. I mean, it doesn't get much more out of bounds than that. So yeah, Tom Waits is extreme for sure. He goes way out of bounds with his moon and Mercury. Fantastic, fantastic chart for a songwriter. Fantastic, I love it. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, yeah, um, and just like, whatever, I like, to, I like to express myself, I'm a Gemini, so sometimes if I express myself harshly, it's all in good fun. It's because I like to do that. And, um, you know, people should stop being idiots. Do better. All right. That's my Virgo moon talking. Anyway, if you enjoy this content, um, hit like, subscribe, share. Uh, go to my website if you want a reading, macroastrology.com. And that's all for today. Thanks, guys. Bye.